Five tricks for better picks. Hello my friends and let's get started with another Affinity Photo tutorial. The first trick I'm going to show you is a mistake that many people make when they take pictures and that is to put the character or the main object of the photo dead center in the picture. This is not good because it makes the picture very static and it can be used as a technique to make the main character look sturdy and strong but in most cases it's not an idea. What you want to do instead is go into the menu of your camera and look for a third grid. There is a digital grid that will be displayed in your viewfinder and this will help you compose your picture in a very nice and interesting way. And the right way to do it is to put the main character off to one side, the right side or the left side, and it should ideally be close to one of these crossings of the line, one of the four. And if you want, you can even put a secondary character on one of the other crossings. So that is a very nice and classic picture composition that works for most cases and makes the picture much more interesting. The second trick I'm going to show you is about the story in the picture. And in a picture, Classically, the right side is the side that is away from home and the left side is the side that is close to home. So in this uh, picture, the woman is sitting away from home. So um, to make this clearer, I have prepared two pictures of the same plane. If you look at this plane, you will feel like this plane is coming from a distance and flying home to the home city. And if you look at this, you will think that this plane is leaving home because it's coming from home, it's coming from the left side. So again, you have these two areas in the picture, left is the home, right is the um, way from, away from home, yeah? The distant, the for, foreign um, area, yeah? Another um, way to memorize this is if you think about a line, if you have a line that goes from the bottom left to the top right, it looks like a rising line. If you have a line that goes from the top left to the bottom right, it is a falling line. This is because we read from left to right, so we understand a lot of pictures from left to right, and left is closer, and right is farther away. Okay, let's go to the third trick. It's also about composition. We have a very nice picture here. And the cool thing about this picture, if you have time to compose your picture, look for these things. In this picture, you have three layers. First layer is close to us. The second layer is a mid-ground. And the third layer, is far behind in the background. So three distances that make a very nice composition and a very nice story. And if you look at the picture, you will see that the picture has a lot of room, a lot of space, a lot of life. It is very inviting. It looks like a theater stage. It's very, how can I say, it has a big space that you can enter. When you compare it to this picture, which just has two layers, there's a close layer and then there is a far away layer, there's nothing in the middle, you see that this picture looks very compressed and dense. Even though there is a big city in the background, it looks like you are pressed against a wall. Let's look at the other picture again. You can see there's a lot of space, you can enter it because of this. the smaller people in the middle ground, you can also assess the distance, you have a feeling for the space in the picture. So that's a very, very nice composition. So look out for something that you, you can put in the foreground, something that you can put in the middle ground, and something that you can put in the background. This gives, in most cases, a very alive and nice composition. Okay, let's look at the fourth tip or trick. And that is for fast editing. If you have a picture like this, which is nice, but it's a bit bland, what you can do is take the layer and just duplicate it and then set it to overlay. And overlay will give you a punch of the color and of the contrast. And because you mix one image with itself, 
it will enhance and reduce the colors and the contrast at the very positions where they are needed. So this is a very nice way to do it. If overlay is a bit too strong for you, you can also go with soft light, which as you can see is a bit softer, but it's still very different from the original picture. You see, if you look at this and then the original, the original almost looks black and white. So this is a very nice technique if you need to edit pictures fast or just want to improve them a little bit. This is very nice. Okay, let's go to the last, the fifth trick I'm gonna show you today. And this is about if you want to have this expensive, uh, how can I say, expensive lens look, but you don't, can't afford an expensive lens. Um, the most thing that is distinguishes an expensive lens is this classic look of depth of field. So the background is unsharp and the foreground is very sharp. And the way you can do that in your photo program is just go to your selection brush and select the main character or main object in your picture. Um, this will take a little while, but not too long. Let's go. We are almost done. And it's a there's a little trick to it. So it's not as easy as just selecting and then unsharp. That's not um, all you need to do. There's a little bit more to it. I will show you in a second. Let me just finish the selection. There we go. A bit up here. The nose is wrong. This has to be set to foreground. There we go. Okay. So I'm, oh, this is not so good. Background. Maybe I have to do this with hand later on. One second. I'm almost done. How does the other parts look over there? We have to correct it a little bit. So as you can see, it's a little bit more work, but it's not that complicated. So um, don't worry too much about it. I think we have a very nice selection. We have to clean up this part a little bit. Um, I can do this later or maybe I do it now. Let's see if I just say that this is background. Will it accept it? Yeah, okay, that's good enough. I think that's good enough. Okay, let's click on apply. And then, oh, there is, uh, it didn't, it didn't take this part. Okay, let's. I will add this by hand. One so, uh, sorry, one second. Let's add this real quick down here. There we go. There we go. There we go. You can take more time and do it better than me. I'm just showing you how it goes. Um, now what we're going to do is we select and inverse the selection, invert uh, pixel selection. There we go. And now we click on mask. So it creates a mask. Uh, select the layer and then click on mask. And now what you want to do, deselect of course the selection, pull out the mask, that's important. And then click on the picture again, go down here to live filters and select Gaussian blur. Then pull out the Gaussian blur effect and pull the mask onto the Gaussian blur effect. And then pull the Gaussian blur effect with the mask together onto the picture. So you have it in three layers, that's important. Now you can click, double click on your Gaussian blur and you can set it to any kind of depth of field that you feel is good. But now you see there's a problem on the edges. This doesn't look good. So what you have to do is click on preserve alpha and now it's clean again, you see? It looks really nice. Um, there are some problems with the mask here. I, I didn't do it that good because I did it very quick. So you should do a better selection than I did. I can also go in here, click on the mask and um, you can take your brush and set it to white and then just draw in here a little bit. You see, so the effect is not applied to these parts where you brush it in in white. It's reduced a little bit up here too. There we go. And um, I think the rest is okay. This could be a bit smoother here. Let's do this real quick. There we go. Something else, maybe here a bit softer too. Okay. Yeah, that's good. There we go. And now you can set your sharpness any way you want. It looks really good. And you have this effect of the expansive lens. Uh, because of the sh 
uh, the unsharpness in the background. So this is very nice. And you can see that this looks a lot more interesting than this picture because the main character is more in focus and more the main objective of the picture. While here there is so much going on in the background that you almost can't see the dog. It's too, it's too close. Everything is too close. So this gives a lot more distance. But of course, you can reduce the effect any way you want. Okay, these are the five quick uh, tricks to improve your picks. Uh, we are done. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Also, if you want to support me, consider um, being one of my patrons on Patreon. And also give me a like and maybe share the video. This helps me a lot. So thank you very much and see you around. Bye.